Lori Beth Slonsky. When I told Lynette Taylor, a longtime friend of Mary Lou, that I was going to have the honor to congratulate Mary Lou for this award on a surprise video, she cautioned, you're not going to tell Mary Lou about our nearly 40 years crush on her, are you? I reassured her, oh God, of course not. This is much too much of a public forum to profess such a personal truth. Leaving the crush aside, Congratulations, Mary Lou, on being awarded the Edward M. Kennedy Lifetime Achievement Award. The name of this award is so aptly telling of you, Mary Lou, a lifetime of work achievements that would take most of us multiple lifetimes to achieve. Curtis, known to many of you as Kitty Cohn, would be thrilled that you are receiving this well-deserved award. If Curtis were alive today, she would be the one saying all the wonderful, reasons you deserve this award. Your professional, political, and personal achievements, and saying it only in a way that Curtis could say it. It's about time Dredeff gave you an award. You are the most fierce, hardworking, creative creature who can get things done. Really, Kitty talked like that. Fierce, creative creature, and it was meant as the highest compliment. Curtis is not here. But hopefully I can channel Kitty's spirit on congratulating you, Mary Lou, for your tireless efforts in overcoming deeply entrenched prejudices, attitudes, and barriers to people with disabilities in so many arenas, and most notably in the medical field. Some time ago, Mary Lou entered university with the desire to pursue pre-med, only to be rebuffed by barriers facing a young disabled woman. You persevered, and through a lifetime of self-education, you have exceeded the training and knowledge of most physicians who provide care to people with disabilities. You became the go-to person for medical knowledge. I can still hear Curtis say, let's just call Dr. Mary Lou. She'll explain this medical mumble jumble. Although your work to improve access to and quality of healthcare has reached far and wide, immense barriers continue to exist. When the ever and always optimist Curtis got sick, she naively assumed that after years of education, advocacy, and training, the doctor in the hospital would surely be ready to provide quality medical care. But being the pragmatist and activist that Mary Lou is, she knew it was going to be next to a miracle for the hospital to have a trained lift team and the right equipment to get per Curtis the proper care. And as Mary Lou has done hundreds of times, she set to work to make miracles happen. From a trained lift team at the ready to researching the latest medical modalities and therapies relevant to Kitty's disability and cur current illness. Curtis thought of Mary Lou as her best friend. From a young age at university to Curtis's deathbed, and as busy as Mary Lou is, she found the time to bring Curtis's favorite foods, stunning flower arrangements, and an umbrella to provide shade for visitors waiting to see Kitty, and they engaged in conversation that allowed Curtis to be present and active in the world until the day she died. Most importantly, Mary Lou brought gifts of love to an undying friendship. Both Curtis and I, and undoubtedly all of you, love Mary Lou's rich, quiet, measured, and even-tempered voice. A voice that in her own calm and composed way rails against injustice, oppression, and provides leadership to march forward to make policy changes on the state, federal, and international level. So to you, Mary Lou, congratulations, you fierce, creative creature you who gets things done.